Although we recently went 20 known foot champs and made some content on the YouTube channel, a lot of you guys have wondered where I've been the past few months. My main focus has been with my game designer duties working for goals, but let's be honest here, I would still be streaming more often and making more gameplay videos on my YouTube channel if other football games on the market were currently more fun, at least for myself. When I do play, you can usually catch me on Twitch, so be sure to do that if you don't already, and you'll most likely see me playing the PS4 version of FIFA 23. I do not play it because it is easier than the next gen or the PS5 version, A, because I don't think it's easier, and B, that's a separate discussion. Even if it was easier, I simply play it because I consider it more fun than the next gen version. Somehow I find myself explaining this over and over. You'd think that since I was dropping 40 and O's, 30 and O's, top 100 placements in FIFA is that some of you didn't even play. It would go without saying that I'm not even afraid of harder matchmaking, even if again, we don't really know if it is. And I do not choose what I play based off difficulty, but rather enjoyment. But here we are still having to explain that. A lot of you also ask, where are this year's FIFA critique videos? And for the most part, there isn't that much to say because believe it or not, most of the things that I think are wrong with the gameplay have been for years and a lot of it hasn't changed. There are only a handful of things that are specific to FIFA 23 that perhaps weren't as prevalent in previous years that would be in the list of reasons as to why I don't play as much this year. One example of that is the whole running around the outside of the field being the meta. Now, if you watch me on stream, you'll know exactly what I mean. And if we take out this handy dandy picture of a football field, uh, I'll, I'll try and illustrate it for those who don't understand. But basically, here's the football field and on FIFA 23, the meta, at least FIFA 23 old gen, the meta is basically to never attack the middle. This is theoretically the most important area in a football field. This is the area that defenders will want to defend the most. But on FIFA 23, that's not really how it translates. The most dangerous areas in the game are here and here. Not necessarily because it's a, an area where people can cross to. No, the meta is essentially having the ball and always dribbling far away towards the wings. Once you get here or here, you would ball roll scoop to turn around and continue in a semicircle movement over and over and over and over. Because one or two things are gonna happen. Either you're just gonna run around someone and then shoot, or you're going to be able to ball roll scoop and keep turning around and around until there's a defensive AI glitch, which this isn't even specific to this year, but the whole running around in this way is very, very helpful. But this whole running diagonally, running around in a semicircle, always looking for the outside, basically plays into the whole coward's meta. I call it a coward's meta because it is more rewarding on FIFA 23 old gen at least to play like a coward. That is, never take an opponent on, never face them off, never attack them directly, always walk backwards, always pass backwards, always ha dribble backwards, ball roll scoop away, always, at all times, without fail, never pass forwards unless there is an absolute enormous gap. Do that over and over and over until eventually the defensive AI glitches, until eventually you're just able to sprint around because you can't second man press, you always have to switch, 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 and oftentimes you switch into people that are running one way while the player is playing this way, so even if you switch to him in time, you always have to fight the inertia of you moving one way and the dribble moving the other way. And this is actually why in my last gameplay videos, I said that I now exclusively play 71 defensive with regardless of my formation. This game logic defies what should be important covering the middle and makes it easier to defend against the meta by spreading out your defensive line. I think it definitely helped me personally to go 20-0 recently a lot easier, even though I got close many, 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 many times this year, because I had the fullbacks occupying the areas that people want to attack, so people actually found it harder to attack the wings, even though I'm giving them all the space in the world in the middle, but it's not really a threat. They don't know how to deal with that threat. All they know how to do is push towards the outside, so next time you play FIFA on PS4, have a look at how people play, tell me people aren't going always on the outside and then maybe have a think about why that is. Other than that aspect of playing FIFA 23, which is really, really specific to this year's game, the other reasons why I don't play are pretty much the same as they have been for years. And if we just go through my last YouTube upload, then you'll be able to see what they, what I'm talking about. But basically they pertain to the usual defensive AI behaviors that force you to defend in a really tedious way 
tackling animations happening for you when you never are tackling now whether an auto tackle or not shouldn't be is one thing and if that's a separate discussion but if they do happen if auto tackles are going to be a thing they should never occur and not lead to you winning the ball like you see in this clip the auto tackle happens i never press tackle but my player doesn't win the ball so all of a sudden i'm stuck in this animation it's not normal for my auto defender to auto tackle and not win the ball how am i getting punished for an ai action i didn't even call for it shouldn't be a matter of turning auto tackles on or off it should be the same for everyone and if an auto tackle occur it better mean that i'm about to get the ball otherwise don't have them happen then we have the same usual stuff with pressing lack of second man press passing assistance and so let's have a look at the highlights that i posted in my 20 in no video now this first clip uh, actually shows a lot of different things but we can look at examples of attacking the wing we can look at tackles me not getting the ball back the opponent auto locking onto the ball making it super easier you may have noticed what i was talking about earlier how people always attack in this direction there's a reason they always it's not simply oh that's where the space is i'm telling you 95 percent of attacks against sweats they start like this they'll be here and they dribble to the outside once they get here what do they do ball roll ball roll scoop turn or whatever and we begin and the semicircle action begins so you feel like you're actually playing on a slope the whole game because your defensive ai is moving to match this never ending up and down up and down it literally feels like you're a mountain and you're just switching to make sure your players don't fall off this mountain it literally feels like there's a force so now as he goes up and down he's able to create a, a situation that is completely unfair now you might look at this goal and be like oh that's there's nothing wrong with this goal but actually there it's just it's just tedious it's not outplaying me it's just forcing the situation of going to the side up and down and dribbling around a semicircle to create a situation that essentially I cannot stop. And if I can stop it, the amount of work I have to do relative to how good the play is, is severely unbalanced. So now that we have it slowed down, we can see Amrabat has the ball here. We know he's going to move up and he's going to pass to Vuller. And Vuller is going to go down. My, my, my defender is going to keep man marking him, even though, in my opinion, he shouldn't at this point. I feel like defensive, defensive AI should work more towards the zone at a certain point this guy should hold his position and stop moving down and this should be the priority of this other center back to start defending this guy but even then I don't even think they should be defending that much I'd rather them do less so that I don't have to fight the inertia of my players and then maybe it's easier for him to pass through but that's fine as opposed to them man marking which allows for this situation that my opponent can exploit Amrabat moves up Voller is still moving down you can see that this center back is still man marking him Lucio's man marking him which is really a big problem in FIFA with the way that how man marking works. We would be much better off if it was more of a zonal uh, behavior. We play the video and eventually Amrabat passes. And although he was always still moving down, same as my defender, the difference is that he gets locked on and auto assisted in a sense that it allows him to change his inertia so that he can start moving up again. Meanwhile, even though... I can end up selecting my defender. I will never catch up and be able to turn here because my player who never gets locked on is too busy still moving in this direction. Now you might say, Stalin, you should have just defended him earlier. And I'm saying that's not the point. The point is with how the game is designed to be played, with how the defensive eye works, this is a situation that will always, always get exploited and it should never occur that's not how it it should play out in a game that wants to reward good defending and good passing because then you create these unorganic massive gaps i would much rather they all stay in a line and mark their zone and then it's up to me to switch and move so i never have to fight the inertia of him moving down not to mention with a system like this you're basically telling the user base just keep going up and down and the meta is passing when the defensive ai is being glitching and so as a defensive user my use my job is not to anticipate my job is not to that my job is to fight the inefficiency of a defensive ai and that is completely backwards why should i be fighting my own ai shouldn't i be fighting my opponent not to mention that even had i selected my guy over here there's nothing that i can do to press 
and push my second man here, right? Because if I was selecting him and I would have pressed second man press, this is a guy who should be pressing here. Now, a lot of you guys will say second man press is OP. And if you are, you're living in cuckoo land because second man press does nothing. So essentially, EA has created a game where they expect me to select this guy. And I do most of the time. It just happens so that this time I didn't. Uh, but even when I do, you'll see in further examples that it makes no difference. So if you see someone in the comments saying, oh, but Stanley, you should have selected him. Just show him the next example or one of the next few examples where I actually do select this guy and the end result doesn't change. But if you're going to make a game where I have to select this guy, then you better have a second man press that's really good because by the time I select this guy, I need a weapon to be able to put pressure on the ball hole simultaneously. Whether you want to deny it or not, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is that second man press does not work well. If I would have selected this guy, he would have had seven centuries on the ball because this guy would have never pressed at the speed that he should have. And so we play out the goal and he gets to turn and shoot. So that's why there's a big difference between turn and shoot goals like this and then turn and shoot goals that you would also see in other examples. The difference is if you turn and shoot and you turn around it against a defender that's moving down and even if I'm selecting him, I'm fighting the inertia, I'm fighting a losing battle, that can't really be considered a skilled goal. That's a goal uh, because of the limitations of the game. Another situation would be that if I was selecting him early enough to where the inertia was a problem and he did turn me and shoot me, then that's a different discussion. That's a different type of turn and shoot goal. But this is a very big reason why this game is such a big headache to play. Now in this next clip, uh, you can see again the same meta of going on the outside, but in this clip, I actually just put it on because it was intense game. I wanted to put on a highlight where I don't concede or I don't score a goal just to throw off the viewer a little bit because generally I just show goals, but I wanted to make it obvious that this was an intense game. And so in this play, he might not score, but I show a defensive seed sequence where he plays this was a very sweaty player so he knew exactly the meta as you can see as soon as he has the ball with team of the year Messi boom attacks the wing and then his game plan like we discussed is going to be to do the whole go here semicircle 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 attack this area this area this area until you can get into into the middle and I'm going to show you how I'm forced to defend and it's extremely tedious and you are pretty much playing a game of patience and at a certain point you're going to go batshit crazy so Messi has the ball Ball roll scoop, cuts inside. Uh, I'm not worried at all here because I know how the meta of the game is. So I know this is not the danger zone, but he's going to try and go to the outside again eventually. He stops, ball roll, and back to the outside, 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 outside. Outside with Modric. And again, we rinse and repeat. We try and cover. We try and look. We're always got our eyes open for this situation. Now, at this point, I already know that this is a potential situation of a defensive AI glitch like we mentioned in the previous uh, clip. So this is why, at this point, I select him. Now, look, this is exactly what I mean when I say, okay, now I know how this game works. I know I'm forced to defend and select one of these two guys. And, okay, fair enough, whatever. Because I'm not selecting them because this is a passing opportunity. I'm selecting them because I recognize that this is a potential scenario where they might get glitched where maybe Lucio, had I not selected him, would have been running this way and then his attacker would have been run on the inside because essentially that's exactly what happened here. In fact, if we go back a little bit, we can see how the defensive glitch actually occurred in this, in this situation. And let's play it really slow here. Modric, ball, I'm here next to the ball holder. Look how he never goes here because, I mean... People, people are just constantly looking for this inside-outside mismatch. He doesn't see it, whatever. Great for me. And here you can see the focus here. Eyes here, eyes here, eyes here. He goes down and defensive glitch. Boom. He has pretty much taken the outside because of the inefficiencies of the defensive AI and how their man marking works. So this is why the whole outside-inside, outside-outside semicircle works best because you play it and you look for this situation that inevitably happens. So again, I'm making the point that as an attacker, these guys, these rats, these sweaty players, they don't play to outplay me. They play, they wait for the situation to arise, and once they do, they pass it in. I just so happened to have been pretty covered here, so he couldn't have played this pass. So because I knew that, I knew that I could get away with ignoring this glitch, and I had to just focus on making sure this one didn't happen, because uh, if we just erase everything, that's actually where I'm I'm most vulnerable because my two CDMs are covering this, but this whole thing is open, so that's why I ended up selecting him. So the sheer fact that I have to select him and deal with this is exhausting mentally and why I can't play too much of this game. But you can see that it happened here. Look how wide open he is. If I didn't have these guys here, I'd be absolutely screwed. So eventually, I select him, and now uh, there shouldn't have been a need to, but I'm just it's, it's just preemptively doing this, right? Petit has the ball, turns, 
boom, he's looking for it, doesn't find it. And to my second point that I mentioned earlier, why if you're going to have this, this whole game isn't balanced correctly. If you're going to have this meta where I have to defend to, to account for the inefficiencies of the defensive AI because they just do something like they would, if the defensive AI was stupid, I would have less things to deal with, right? But because they're trying too hard, I actually have to cover for them. If they just stood still and did nothing, I'd be less exposed. That's the irony here. So whatever. We get to here. And once you see Lucio, you can see that instinctively I press second man press, which probably should have been this guy. Anyways, not sure why it's this one, but whatever. And look how look how he presses. So basically, I'm forced to select him, but I can't even put pressure on the ball holder at the same time. And people say second man press is OP. The speed at which he goes is so slow and so just nonchalant compared to what it used to that i have no idea how people have the balls to say that that feature is overpowered it is definitely not overpowered and so i i'm at a massive disadvantage i have to cover this and he gets to have all the time in the world because i can't manually put pressure on him fantastic right so this is another reason why i don't play this game now eventually i just deal with this situation uh, because i'm the best in the world kappa uh, and we and we survive right but the whole sequence is patience slow patience you can see how that would make me go nuts after years of dealing with this right i mean hell i'm only human and it's not a coincidence that this next clip again there's no goal because again it's the same match i'm trying to just show it create the intensity in the video just show that you know not every play is going to be a goal Le leave the the viewer on the edge of the seat is he going to score is he going to not he's not going to score here but it's not a coincidence the same play comes from the same player because the moment you play the rats is the moment that you know, okay, this guy's a sweat. He knows what works. He knows the moments that are going to give him the RNG benefit. And he knows which situations might give him the benefit of the doubt. And he does it here too. Now here, this is the example where I said it doesn't matter when you select the right person, right? Because if I was lazy, I would keep selecting uh, this guy next to the ball holder and try and cut the uh, intercept the cutback would fail and it would still end up uh, reaching him and so people say oh you should have you should have selected uh, this guy if you wanted to intercept the cutback all right let's see let's have a look let's have a look all right so let's play it at full speed first probably won't catch what went wrong there but let's slow it down so if we slow it down he's here with money ball roll creates the angle i've pretty much said i don't care what happens here i know how this game works i know the passing trajectory is going to get assisted to no end i'm going to put it in my own hands i'm going to cut this passing lane but it's not going to work. So this is the same issues as before, right? The whole uh, passing assistance things. These are these new things that these are not new things. These are things that have been the same for years. And one of the main reasons I, I still don't play this game as much as I want, because at a certain point, what's the point? If you can't do every if you if you make the right decision, you don't get rewarded. Of course, I don't want to play this game. Mine has the ball turns. I know this should be the tra passing trajectory, right? In in every uh, 10 times out of 10, if you do a, dr a, gra a, gr a ground pass, German pass, whatever, it should be a trajectory from the passer to the receiver in a straight line. And that's super important because if I know that, then me selecting this guy, I know I have to put myself here and I'll intercept the ball. It's important that these things are known, transparent and user decision-based so that both players have an opportunity to outplay the other this i put myself in a situation to outplay him i selected him i knew this was coming and i was going to intercept it if this game was competitive uh, but it's not it's more of simulation based so here what happens instead is somehow this pass still goes through and eventually i got lucky because he took a bad first touch and i auto tackled him away but had that not happened i would have conceded to no fault of my own i did everything perfectly now, you have to explain to me, why is it okay here that this pass goes here? Why is it going here? Because I guarantee you 100,000% that if I never pushed out, if I was never selecting this guy, this pass would have gone in this trajectory as it should have. And then I would have, but because I'm selecting him, because I put pressure in this direction, the game does this change in trajectory ever so slightly the other way so that all of a sudden i know i don't get locked on to this pass i don't have the opportunity to intercept it he gets locked on and he gets to turn away this is unbelievable to me that this happens and it's extremely frustrating and it is a massive reason why i i can't play this game not as much as i would want to to make more videos 
and more streams. Finally, now that we got over the gameplay reasons, which of course are always the main reasons, let's look at the third reason I don't want really to play this game, and it's one I never really want to talk about. I let other creators talk about this sort of stuff, but it low-key has me split in this regard because things may actually be for the best as they stand, even though obviously they aren't. What I'm talking about here is the modes, the, the, the what people do, what the users do, the way the foot is designed to be played, the progression, the experience. It feels like nothing has any value. I like to compete. I'm a competitive guy and I like to push myself when I enjoy playing something like, like FIFA uh, or Pez or whatever. And I think the old foot champ system was, it was a lot better. Nowadays, the foot gameplay experience seems uh, to be geared more so in making users doing things just for the sake of doing them. Nowadays, pretty much every mode is quite chill, bar a few exceptions, at least compared to what it used to be. And it's all about objectives to earn tokens, tokens that uh, where you can unlock something special to give you a chance at a pack, or maybe you unlock a player and the way to earn those tokens, you know, you have to score with one Brazilian while assisting with a Polish player who happened to marry a Greek and has a South African nephew, but also has three star skills. And I'm just like, bro, what? Like, I don't know about you guys, but objectives like these, they just... They give me headaches. I guess maybe some people like it, so who am I to judge? Uh, so fair enough, but I feel like there's a better way to force people to change up the players they use. If you want to force people to play with new teams and cards, fine, that's co that's totally fair, but you can't change how I play to make me do that. Because an objective like this, it makes me get into a 1v1 situations and be hyper-focused on certain players. It would be more, situ more than enough to say, win this many games with this team, or win this tournament with this team, get this far in champs with this team, play in this tournament and do that, or whatever, and that would allow me to play the same way that I usually do, just with different actors on the screen, and I don't have to get a headache. But the moment I get into a 1v1, and I see that, oh, oh, this is not the South African with two-star skills, uh, now I have to pass it back, because there's no point in scoring a goal anyways, because it's not with the right guy anyways, so, oh, my attack got ruined. Let me go back. Like, that just, that just looks awful on the field. The moment you alter my play star is the moment my experience is ruined, but I digress. The main point here is that the modes, they're just not fun and they aren't really meaningful either. Champs is the chillest it's ever been, and this is where the paradox comes in for me because it is also a good thing, in my opinion, because as bad as everything that we mentioned is, as boring as the modes are, and as weird as whole objective uh, game mode of foot has become, like card collecting sort of game, it's still I low key, low key, it's probably for the best and it comes back to the main thing which is why it's the main thing i always talk about and that's gameplay the gameplay isn't competitive it's not close enough to allow for the better player to win in the right way it's not good enough to have the older more ruthless foot champions matchmaking or at 40 games or whatever and the gameplay this year is still plagued with the usual rng that makes the margins between two really good players tiny and the mechanics that allow you to get the edge in those margins are as you guys know in my opinion just not good okay they're not good mechanics so ironically easier matchmaking chill objectives oriented experiences are probably for the best based of how the state of the game is and for me that's a bit of a shame there's a lot of wasted potential there so there you guys have it a very long discussion based video if you made it this far you're a legend and this is who i want to give this message to let me know down below if you did get this far and also check out the pin comment there's gonna be a pin comment down below it's really important because it pertains to a new format that i want to do and i need your opinion okay so let me know your thoughts down below and i'll catch you in the next one peace